outside. Here we have 55 people now. We are hopefully waiting for a couple of them more in this during this introduction. Please put your Instagram account in your name. It would be much easier for everyone to follow you back. It can be a good idea. Um, my name is Pablo. I am the co-director of the Experimental Photo Festival with Laura. Laura, in my screen is there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> in mine, I'm in the other side. <laughs> Hello, um, everyone. You, I, I don't know how much you have been using Zoom, but you have this uh, speaker view or the general view. If you use the general view, it's nice because you can see everyone and you have the feelings that you are being with everyone. And at least for me, this is the nicer one. Okay, not to be in listening to me, that is not the best thing that can happen to you on a Saturday night. Okay, um, we have created the Experimental Photo Festival uh, two, two years ago because we really wanted to do this kind of activities, you know, uh, putting everyone together, knowing new experimental techniques and sharing. At the end, we have the feeling that Instagram is an amazing, strong, uh, um, thing that we can use to connect, but we need something else. We just, we really need to get in touch physically and personally and sharing things much more than just showing our images. That's why uh, two years ago, we have created Experimental Photo Festival. That is the best, the, fe the best, no, the first uh, festival just dedicated to experimental photography in the world. And it has been growing fast and we are really, really happy about this. Uh, the first uh, festival was in January 2020, a year ago. We are now celebrating the first year of the festival. Uh, we have changed the dates for July for the summer in Barcelona that we think it's going to be a much better moment for everyone to share here in Barcelona. If you can come, it would be an amazing opportunity to meet between each other and also doing amazing workshops. We are having here Lena, uh, Patrice, uh, Karen and Carlos that are going to come to the festival for sure. And some of them are going to be doing workshops and on double exposure and also film swap. For sure, you are going to love them. And Yvette, also Yvette, I think she's not here, but she's also working with us and is going to be in the festival. Um, we, ha we are having 80 workshops during the festival. You have enough time for, for doing them all. Wait, someone talking okay um, nothing else this is the festival we are having this in july you can buy a ticket uh, for 125 euros or 150 with two workshops hope everything is going to get better for sure at least in europe it's going to be better uh, in july for coming we have to trust we are going to be 300 400 people here uh, you can just ask to the artists of the last year how it was the experience, uh, to Patrice or Carlos, you can talk with them personally and they are going to explain that this was an amazing experience and that's why they are going to come again next year, okay? We have this book that we have published the last year. This is the manifest of the Experimental Photo Festival. It's an amazing book that you can buy in our webpage, okay? Um, it's about the artists that came the last year and, and how it was. And if not, you have some conferences on our YouTube channel also for free, if you can see, if you want to see them. Um, that's it. That's the festival. Ah, I also have my book because I have been working with Double Exposure also for the last three years with Laura. Also, we have a project and we have started the Experimental Photo Festival mainly with this Double Exposure community. Uh, we are going to do a workshop the, ne the next uh, weekend on Saturday. We have it uh, presential in Barcelona and on Sunday. We have it uh, on internet in Spanish and in English. If you want to join us, it would be an amazing opportunity of two hours to share what we have learned in the last three years. Join us also if you want to come. Okay, I don't know, Laura, do we have something else to say? Oh, it's okay. I think we have all good. Yeah, I was just <laughs> sharing the links. <laughs> Sorry, you got me. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. I'm going um, to share the link of the of the next workshop that we are going to do. And all good. Thanks okay. everyone for joining and enjoy. It. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you everyone. Uh, I'm Pablo, Laura, and Carlos. He was the curator of the exhibition. We are going to give him 
the opportunity to explain <laughs> how it was this amazingly hard work. It was our biggest uh, online exhibition. We have more than 214 participants from more than 45 countries. It was amazing for us. Thank you so much, Carlos, for working with us, for collaborating with us for the last two years. It's an amazing experience always to share with you. Hi, everyone. Well, uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to Laura and Pablo to let me to participate being the the first time I'm creating an online exhibition. It was a, like a super challenge for me because there were so many people, as Pablo said, 240 participants. It was like, wow, outstanding. So I'm really, really happy to you guys to participate, to send your works. It will be, it, will, it was like super hard to just choose nine finalists um, because it was a, a, a challenge. There were people with a really, really good job, like really uh, good works, images um, that couldn't be on the on the final part of the exhibition. So, yeah, what else to say? Thank you very much, and uh, I don't know. Keep uh, experimenting and keep shooting and keep enjoying because this is like just the beginning. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carlos. You can follow Carlos on Instagram also. And Laura is going to, sh to share with you also his webpage. He has a book on film soup also that is amazing in Spanish and English. You can buy it also if you want to learn a little bit more. And we have, been do we have done with him a workshop. I think it was a month ago or something like this. You can buy also the video if you want with Carlos explain a little bit more about the film soup technique. Okay, thank you so much, Carlos. Um, I, I want just to explain why we are having just nine artists in the online exhibition. The thing is that we really want to give you presence in our social networks, okay? That's why we are just uh, uh, publishing one every day. And we, we have just 15 days from the first day of the month till the, till the day 15. We have just 15 days to, to publish nine artists because on, on the day 15, and you are going to see this month again, we are just presenting the next uh, online exhibition that is going to start the next month. That is somehow weird that we, can, we can't put more artists, but we really want to give you the opportunity to be one day. And we are just having a lot of su success with them, having more than 1,000 uh, likes and this is amazing but also we have this feeling that this was a pity that this was a shame that we don't have more space to show more of your work and that's why we are creating these kind of places to share and we are really happy of having, having you here because we are going to have the chance to know uh, 10 more artists okay if we are ready if Bernadette is ready we can start with the presentation of the works we are the first hour we are going to present these 10 artists and then in the second part we are going to go to the small groups to have some fun to share some ideas and to meet us uh, more closely okay thank you bernadette for being here she's coming in some metaphorically from australia from the land of, of wine in australia and we are so happy of having you here Thank you very much, Pablo. Yes, um, I am obviously in, in Australia, in New South Wales. Um, my image, as you see it there, is um, an experimental image with uh, taken with an Ondo six by nine um, pinhole camera. I um, I have a bit of a, a love affair with our beautiful landscape out here, and. I took this image at a time when we were in the beginning of a little, we were halfway through a drought. So the river is actually a lot higher than that. And part of that is, is due to climate change, but it's also due to our man-made footprint, which is why I actually had my hand in the photo as well when I shot the film. Um, just to represent that, you know, it's a very popular camping spot. A lot of people go to this creek. It's in one of our national forests. And it's a beautiful part of the country and it's 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 so changeable because we are so susceptible to weather patterns down here um, at the moment we're in we're in what they call a la nina pattern so we're actually getting lots and lots of rain at the moment okay. so 
the river will change again and I haven't had a chance to get back out there to take some more images, but that's what I'm hoping to do. So I find pinhole for me is something that I'm very passionate about. I discovered it when I was at art school and since then I've just developed from there. I've, I've taken on all sorts of crazy and weird and wonderful ideas from that. <laughs> but I love the colours in this. I love the movement in it. I find for me, pinhole, I can actually capture that little change that happens. There's always something that causes a catalyst at some point and changes what is I'm really passionate about. So I love seeing that in this image. So exploring the different colours, I find film also for me um, gives like another layer of depth that you don't get with digital photography. I don't get me wrong, I do like my digital photography, but I find this is just something that is more special and there's just something about it. There's a softness, there's an ethereal feel to it. I was also lucky at the time, um, the lighting was really good. We were in spring when I took this image and the light was fantastic. There was a little bit of cloud, so the shade, the lighting was just perfect. Also, there was a little bit of movement. There was a little bit of wind blowing in the trees and it just picked that up really nicely on the film as well. But I love the idea of um, double exposure and, and playing with putting something in front of the film while you're taking it. And that's the joy of pinhole. You have time to be able to do that, to be able to put something in front of an image that you wouldn't expect to normally be there. And it just gives you another layer of something special, something different that you just don't normally see. So I, exper I like to experiment with anything really. At the moment, I'm just sort of experimenting with my hands and, and showing how that has an impact on our surroundings and our landscape. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy it. It's just something that's different that you normally don't get to see. So I play around with a lot of that sort of stuff. Um, vegetation, as you can see in it, is encroaching because the creek is so dry, we call it a creek here. Um, the vegetation is really starting to come back onto the onto the waterway and that shows up you can see how it's really bright down the bottom part of where where especially in the mid ground where the water meets sort of the vegetation and then as you slowly get higher and higher the colors change they get a little bit muted we did have a lot of rain start to ha happen just after I took this film so this okay. image so you can sort of feel that that is in the air in that image for me that's what i'm sort of looking at is just that little bit of change something that's going to happen that you're not prepared for <laughs> and that's the other reason why i like film photography as well and also experimenting with multiple exposures you don't know what's going to happen sure. it's something <laughs> that it just it just seems to happen and you take the image and you hope to Christ, when you develop the film that it's going to turn out beautifully so it's that unknown as well that I really really enjoy so experimental photography for me is fantastic because I find you can push it in so many different ways you can have your film suit you can have your multiple exposures there's so many ways for you to move forward with your work that you sort of don't really expect so until you actually give it a go, you don't realise just how much freedom you get with experimental photography. Yes, that's, so, that, yeah. that's why we call chance to power to the, our workshop on double exposure, because in the end, chance is working a lot with you, you know? That's why exactly. That's yes, why it's exactly. amazing in double exposure to accept that these uh, thing with chance can change, obviously, what you're trying to find, and, and that's great. Uh, this was a 35 millimeters camera, pinhole camera? Uh, no, it was actually a medium format film. It does okay. take 35 mil, but I prefer to work in uh, medium format if I can. Some of the 35 mil, I have taken some images in that and they are quite good as well, but I just find I can work better with a, with a medium format. So I prefer about a 120 mil if I can get away with it. So. Yeah, you have a less you have less images, but I prefer to like um, I just prefer working in a medium format. You just can explore a little bit more. Okay, is this wooden camera, isn't it? Yes, it's a wooden undo okay. camera. Yes, so yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It's easier to transport. Um, I have made my own um, cardboard um, pinhole 
cameras before and they work really, really well. But when you're working um, out in the field, it can be a bit tricky to change the film over yeah. because you need to have light proof bags. And if you're in an area where you sort of don't really have a lot of space to be able to change the film over, it can make it tricky again as well, which is why I suppose I do like working with a wooden camera um, because you just simply can unroll the reel and once it's done, you put the film in the canister and you can take it back and develop it. So just for ease is more than anything else. But I am working on my own actual camera. I'm sort of working on my own, um, making my own wooden pinhole camera again, just for ease of access. So as I can go to some remote places, because we have beautiful remote places down here where we can get amazing images that a lot of people sometimes don't get a chance to see. So yeah, it's it's like, we're lucky. We, we live so <laughs> close to such vast um, differences of landscape that you normally wouldn't get to see. You can go from the desert to the rainforest to the ocean. So we are quite blessed where I live. Amazing. Thank you so much, Bernadette, for your image. I think Thank it's a, an amazing image to start this uh, presentation and debate. Hope we have Janine with us. She was not at the beginning, but I think she was now with us. Janine, are you there? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Are you in your car? I am in my car. I can't even see me. I'm, I'm actually taking a camera obscura workshop right now. So I'm trying to uh, darken my car and um, do a couple of things at the moment. But hi, I'm really happy to be here. That's we are having, having you. <laughs> Thank I'm sorry. you so much for taking this time to be with us. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. I love everything you guys do. It's, it's such an inspiration. So thank you. What can you tell us about your picture? Um, this picture is actually, I took this at night um, and it is possibly, I think it's three. I took it quite a while ago. It's an older double exposure of mine. But it's, um, I want to say that it's at least three, so it's a triple exposure. Okay. And those lines that you're seeing are actually telephone wires. Okay. So it's a picture that I took when there was a lunar eclipse. Um, and so I went outside and I was just hanging out there for a while. And so I took a long exposure, um, but also set it to double exposure. So it's a extended double exposure. <laughs> Crazy, <laughs> but you, you did them both. Yes. Yes. Yeah. At, so this is a night same shot. Moment, or you change it the film roll two times? No, I took it. Um, I took them like, um, well, no, I didn't change it. I just held the frame and then just shot over it. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. We didn't understand that it was a night shot, you know? Now it's much more surprisingly because you have the moon and it's during the night, but it looks like during the day, you know? Right. This, this, yeah. This and I mix also. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, that's what I, I mean. I love about film is you know creating something that you can't see with the naked eye and constantly learning more about your environment and light, and you know it kind of pushes you to be more present in a lot of ways. But I, I'm often surprised, even though I've shot film for quite a while now, it still always is like shocking me. And I'm learning new things. I'm, I'm pretty sure that at the time I was always shooting with film that was given to me. So a lot of it had been expired or, um, you know, I traveled with it. So it's put through some extremes. So that could have contributed a bit to it looking um, a little bit bluer than it should have. Maybe a little color shifting there. Amazing. I really love this image because you can have this perspective and the idea of movement. You know, at some point it's like really static, but you have this idea of movement that it makes like crazy things, you know? I'm also working personally with double exposure and I'm, yes. I just published today one picture with this mix between macro and micro and you have this crazy feeling, you know, that is movement, but it's not movement that is really close, that is really big and small. At the I same love time. that. And I yeah. think that your picture has the same idea and I think that's a nice way to keep experimenting, you know? Thank you. Yeah, I love I love that too about um, I mean, I've, I've followed your work and I really enjoy it. And I, I love that, you know, you can take something that looks um, kind of normal, but there's something slightly off about it, like perspective or, you know, like the, the shift between something macro or micro and it makes you double take, you know, and I think like creating that space it gives people a different perspective and can help them, you know, maybe sometimes shift out of whatever they're experiencing or 
just see things in a different way, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's all just an appreciation of beauty for sure. So, I have a question, I, Pablo. Yes, uh, sure. For Janine, uh, that it was on purpose or it was like a double exposure, unpredictable, I mean, by a happy mistake? No, it was on purpose. Um, I've shot only, I went to school for photography. Um, and at, at the time when I had started, I was really lucky to learn traditionally with only film at a time when only film existed. I remember when I was like working at a store and I was explaining what megapixels were to people. Um, so that was really fun. But then when I finished school, I, and I was always still using all, my camera for all of my projects, but I was learning like the workflow of digital. Um, right as I started, they had taken all of the color dark rooms out, which was super sad. Um, but I was lucky because I learned all of that beforehand. So I had a very traditional background. And when I finished school, I decided to stop doing weddings, stop doing all of the stuff that made me money with digital and focus on what I loved, which was double exposure. Um, and since then, I've primarily only shot double exposure. Uh, but I've also spent a lot of my time traveling. So I haven't been able to really always like put my work up or document it so well um, because I just have negatives everywhere and like my file <laughs> management like needs a lot of work. Um, so COVID has helped me a lot in that way to just not have anywhere to go. And I'm, I'm really trying to um, document everything that I've created since I was 17. Um, and I had a camera in my hand even before that. So I'm trying to get everything by Lightroom, like categorized by word and, um, but mainly it's all double exposures intentionally. Amazing. With, with lots of happy accidents for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's <exactly. laughs> Is uh, this archive, ar archive, I don't know what's the name. To have a good archive with your images is, is really important. We are going to do a workshop in some point in March or a a April with me. Um, we are going to talk about this because I think it's really important to, to control everything that you have, you know, is that is, this is not the end of the process. It might be part of the process because it's yeah. the way that you can see your work and come back. You know, this is a good way yeah. to keep having more inspiration with your work, because when you are seeing your work again, you are learning things from these images because you didn't take what you want. You take something and eat something new. You have to see it a couple of times and in different time of your life to learn more things from your own work. That's why having yes. everything in the archive well organized is, uh, is really important, you know? Yeah, totally. I love that you guys acknowledge that and are creating a workshop because that's something that, you know, is kind of an afterthought, but it is so important. And I've realized like now that I'm doing all of my own developing, Um, and everything by hand, I'm really realizing how much I'm learning from my work by doing it quicker in succession and actually, you know, actually thinking about it and seeing where I'm at as an artist. And that's really improving my work also. But being able to find your old stuff and compare it is like <laughs> vastly important to your growth as an artist. So I look forward to that workshop. Great. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Janine. Where are Thank you, you guys. exactly? Where Thank are you, you exactly? I'm in Buffalo, New York. Okay. At the moment. Great. At the moment, that means that you are going to keep traveling. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. I'm always on the go, um, and I'm. I'm. T I'm going to New York City um, next week, and I'm taking a camera obscura class. Okay. So I'm making the camera from my car because that will be with me in both places. So. Okay, amazing. If you can send us the information of the workshop, it can be amazing because we have some people on the U.S. and two of us. Well, I mean, not us because I'm in Barcelona, but two of them are, or three of them, because Google is also there, they're on New York, and maybe they can just go to your workshop or just say hello and have, grab a beer or something together. Oh, yeah, I would love to network. I'll be posting <laughs> it on my Instagram, and um, I'd love to meet everybody and collaborate. Yeah, Amazing. thank you. Thank you so Thanks, much, guys. Janine, for yeah. being with us. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Alondra, ¿estás lista? Okay. We are going to be showing this image from Alondra. She's going to speak in Spanish and we are going to try to translate for everyone. Uh, we are just going to try to go fast. Hola Alondra, ¿qué tal? Mucho gusto. Sí, tengo aquí ya listo la traducción para compartirla en el chat. Okay, she's going to send the translation on the chat. If you want to read it there, it can be easier. Ok, bueno, pues mire, como les comentaba, mi nombre es Alondra García Valverde. Yo soy de Tampico, Tamaulipas, México. 
Y pues bueno, la, la fotografía la tomé con una cámara Nikon G3. Y pues bueno, yo recién pruebo esta técnica, no la había experimentado. Eh, y este rollo es un rollo de los que vende Carlos, de los de Superfilm. <ríe> Hola Carlos, saludos. Y pues bueno, pues dije, la primera vez para probar esta técnica, pues quiero probar con un, con un rollo hecho con, por Carlos. ¿no? Entonces me hicieron favor de mandármelo eh, de España para, para México. Y pues bueno, decidí probarlo primero este, con, con, con un rollo de él y ya dije, después, pues, ahora con el taller, pues a ver si puedo yo hacer mis propios mis propios rollos también después, más adelante, ¿no? Y bueno, para iniciar esta técnica, pues decidí primero eh, probar, digo, más bien, a mí me interesaba probarlo con retrato, porque lo he visto que lo prueban mucho con paisajes o con cosas abstractas, entonces tenía como esa inquietud de probarlo con, con retrato, ¿no? Entonces hice varias fotos de retrato en el rollo, bueno, en principio hicimos unas en un cementerio, y casualmente, bueno, la que ustedes eligieron fue esta que es un paisaje, nuevamente, pero es con un retrato de una persona, y bueno, cuando vi este atardecer, dije, voy a, no voy a dejar de hacer esta foto en la que siempre vemos el, el paisaje enfocado y la persona desenfocada, ¿no? Esta típica ah. foto eh, donde está el, la persona desenfocada y, y se ve enfocado el, el, el paisaje, ¿no? Entonces, pues bueno, me encantó cómo se vio el resultado, la verdad no sabía qué iba, qué iba a pasar. Platicaba yo con Carlos que, bueno, que me tardé mucho en tomarlo y ciertamente la, la, la química como que siguió funcionando y bueno, que es parte de lo que hace la técnica, ¿no? Se va, no sabes qué colores te van, a, te van a salir, ¿no? Qué atmósfera o qué magia le va a dar a la, a la imagen o le va a añadir a la imagen, ¿no? Y bueno, yo siento que le dio como un tanto de misterio, eh, como que si la persona que está frente a mí se estuviera desvaneciendo, en un viaje astral o psicodélico, un poco en el olvido, porque es una persona que allá ahorita pues no, no la veo tanto o la quiero olvidar, y es como un final para mí ahorita, ¿no? Y, y ahorita que la, me puse a verla el, el, ayer, dije, pues creo que es, queda muy bien con, con lo que siento ahora con, con esta persona. Claro, que está ahí como difuminada, se está yendo, ¿no? Viene como de un lugar así, viene como de un paisaje y se va, ¿no? Y, y además no sé, la perspectiva que, que tiene, o sea... O que va de espaldas o va de frente a mí, no sé. Este, bueno, sí, pero está como, en ese, está como en el medio, ¿sabes? Se está moviendo y se viene o se va y todo. Y como dice Carlos, la perspectiva es perfecta en esta idea de irse. Sí, claro. Y también le comenté a Londra que está muy bien aprovechado el hecho de, de los oscuros. Sobre todo en el film sub, contra más oscuro sea, más se nota el resultado. Y, y esta pues quedó brutal, o sea, todas las de este carrete le quedaron muy, muy chulas. Sí, el resto de los retratos que están en mi Instagram también son en fondo negro y casual así todo como se este rollo psicodélico continúa, ¿no? Del, Súper. Del YouTube en las, en las orillas, de, del, en los oscuros, como dice Carlos. Super, super, super. Uh, I just want to say a, a couple of things that, that we have been talking because I haven't read the text. But Carlos was talking about the perspective that is amazing, this uh, perspective, and also how she has been working with these dark parts. Carlos was talking technically that normally the results of the film soups are much better in the darker parts. That's why these kind of moments of the day make it much more psychedelic and also that the results of the film swaps are much better. Um, Carlos was really film happy. Soups, this Pablo, is a film swaps, Pablo, film swaps now. Film soups, perdona, sorry, <laughs> sorry about this. Um, this is a film soup that Carlos did and sent to Alondra in Mexico. Uh, he has a company, a new company called Film Super, Super Film. You can buy uh, um, film rolls from him if you want. Ok, thank you so much Alondra, gracias Alondra por tu imagen, es muy muy inspiradora, realmente creo que combina perfectamente y explica muy bien la, la cuestión del, del film sub y, y me ha gustado mucho, la verdad que yo le he seleccionado a esta particularmente sin saber esta idea que tú decías de, de que estabas buscando los retratos, pero creo que como tú dices bien ha quedado muy bien, a mí me inspiraba esta idea de los colores, ¿no? los colores del, del final, del horizonte, y los colores que, que quitaba el film sub y aquí esta perspectiva y aquí esta idea de abstracta como de irse, ¿no? Así que eso por eso la, la he seleccionado yo. Y bueno, también el típico mexicano, este, está el anuncio de, un, de una tienda como un Seven, es aquí el, el Oxxo, 
le llamamos, que es como un 7-Eleven. Súper. Ok. Thank Listo, you gracias. so much, Alondra, for Muchas being gracias. with us. Also, you can follow Alondra. She's doing also a lot of interviews. You can find a lot of interviews in her Instagram account. I think she has one with Carlos and one with me, also talking about the festival in Spanish. I think it was like a couple of months ago, at least four or five months. She's really amazing. Hope we have Silvestras from Lithuania with us to talk about the next image, also about film soup. Are you here with us, Silvestras? Yes, yes, I am. Can you hear me? We can hear you perfectly. Super. Uh, particularly this shot, uh, it was a real accident. Like, uh, I had to develop a film for a friend and she gave me like the wrong film. And she said like, then I asked her, what should I do with it? She said like, you can throw it away. And I'm like, uh, why? And she's like, some somebody's opened my camera in like in the middle of the roll. And they said like, okay, if you want to throw it away, I will shoot shoot over it. So I shot over it. Then I soaked half of it in salt salty water, like in salt. Then other half in uh, vinegar based uh, floor cleaner, then sprayed it with the glass cleaner, and that's how this picture came out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, yeah, it's, a, it's a good mix, eh? The, yeah, the best combination <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, mostly I document my city because, like, uh, in some there there were some circumstances i had to leave my town so <laughs> so i'm got back like after four years living abroad and uh, now i'm trying to fall in love with my hometown again so i'm documenting my own city because it's a really strange mixture be between modern architecture uh, classic, uh, like old architecture and Soviet brutalism. It's like, I don't know. For me, it's as an architecture lover, it's uh, heaven. <laughs> where, where is it exactly? Uh, Vilnius. Vilnius. Ah, Vilnius. Ah, okay. Yeah. I have been doing a film swap with someone in Vilnius. I don't know her name, but you can find the image on my Instagram account. Uh, she's amazing. She's also doing film swap. Maybe you can share with her at some point. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm planning to film swap up with uh, Hannah Logical, I think, okay. on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So we're having now, like, talking about film swapping some films we're going to soak and shoot and double exposures and stuff. So. OK, that's a great game. I think you are going to have fun. That's amazingly good. Okay, and also, and... So, uh, sorry, Paulo, the, yeah. I like the uh, story behind this photo because Silvestres mentioned that he, he had to leave his hometown and I think the film soup give like a different way to see your hometown when you, no? When yeah, you yes, again, exactly, like, yeah. Yeah, different, the same city, but the different as well because it's totally different. You leave and you're coming back. Yeah, like it's... It didn't like uh, it changed uh, quite a lot, but not in the old city. Like the old city, it stays the same almost, <laughs> and like it spreads quite fast. So there's quite a lot to capture, and you know. Yeah, but I mean the, the way you see the the city. Yeah, the, 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 yes, yes, yeah. It's, it's, everything is the same, but you it, see it changed. Easily. Yeah. It's, it changed my look into the city through the film soaps and I'm really happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Okay, thank you so much Silvestras. We really love this You're image welcome. and we think it, it can really demonstrate how film soup can modify our vision of the, of the situation because really the image is something that we can consider normal 
but this combination of a modification of colors and this texture also give a new special way of seeing things. Yeah. Do you want to say something else? Mm, no, not sure. No, <laughs> not <Okay>. really. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, Thank you, guys. Uh, do we have Claudia from Colombia here with us to explain this image? I'm crazy with this image. Hope you can explain what you did because it's, it's crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm keep thinking, what is this image about? And I can't get any idea, you know? Hola, bueno, pues yo hablar en inglés, pero creo que me va a sentir más cómoda hablando en español. Así que también voy a mandar el texto por el chat y okay. les voy a contar en español. ¿Está bien? Ok. Eh, bueno, pues esta imagen la, pues, hace parte de una serie de fotografías que hice acá en la sala de mi casa. De noche la idea fue iluminar diferentes composiciones de espejos con una luz negra en todo este juego de composiciones pues fue bastante sorpresivo el resultado utilicé un filso con tinta de esfero azul y pimienta fue bastante sorpresivo porque en la parte superior de la imagen no, no se ven manchas del filso no sé si por por la incidencia de la luz, que de pronto tomó mucha fuerza. La imagen, pues como que es bastante irreal, no es como cuando sacas una fotografía en el espacio exterior, como que se ve claramente que puede ser o lo asocias con algo en la cotidianidad. Así que parece como, para mí parece como algo en el universo exterior, como un universo, como un espacio al que entras como una cueva o no sé, para mí es como un túnel o un espacio irreal. Mm, a mí personalmente me gustan mucho los colores fríos, los ambientes fríos. Me conecto, pues no sé, en cuanto a, a estaciones, me conecto con el invierno y con el otoño. Así que me gustó muchísimo que la imagen pudiera ser acorde a esto. Me encantan como las manchas de color que, que generó la tinta. Eh, lo hice con un rollo Fujifilm y pues con la tinta y con los granos de pimienta. Era la primera vez que trabajaba con, con estas sustancias. Eh, en verdad hace un par de meses, unos cuatro o cinco meses, empecé a experimentar con filso. Eh, hago parte de un colectivo de fotografía experimental y video experimental. Así que llevamos más o menos tres años y en este tiempo ha sido como especial y divertido poder jugar con todas estas técnicas. Eh, vamos a hacer como unas um, fotografías en solarigrafía también, así que pues espero más adelante poderlas mostrar. Eh, siento que la imagen como que tuvo un resultado de, de profundidad y perspectiva. Eh, me gustó mucho como la sensación de continuidad, como la imagen que se duplica, por eso quería utilizar espejos. Usualmente eh, trabajo con espejos en, en diferentes series de fotografía. Mm, y me gustó esto, por, me gusta trabajar con los espejos porque tiene como una sensación similar a las dobles exposiciones o múltiples exposiciones. Eh, y bueno, como que en realidad la estética de mis fotografías o lo que he intentado lograr a través de, de estos años de, de jugar con fotografía análoga eh, es como imágenes de otra realidad, realmente como que yo utilizo la experimentación por medio de, del revelado de, de las películas y también toco la imagen en, en el escáner, así que no soy como tan purista ante, en este proceso de que la imagen sea fiel a lo que eh, a lo que se fotografía, pero en realidad a mí me parece interesante cambiar un poco los colores o darle ese tinte especial a la fotografía para que parezca como bajado de una ilusión o de alguna situación onírica. Claro, súper, 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 súper. Entonces no es una doble exposición, digamos, sino que son espejos. 
son espejos, sí, digamos, hay espejos, son tres espejos y la luz negra está colocada sobre ellos, pues en esta foto. Claro. Hice otras en las que jugué de otra manera con las luces y con los espejos, pero esta es un espejo en la base y dos espejos a los lados. Guay, no, súper, súper interesante, la verdad, la perspectiva es muy, muy sorprendente, como tú dices, el tono azul este también sorprende un montón. Al principio del taller que vamos a hacer sobre doble exposición, un juego que hacemos es esto, cuáles son realmente dobles exposiciones hechas en cámara y cuáles son dobles exposiciones que, por ejemplo, te salen a partir de jugar con espejo o jugar con vidrios. Claro que la doble exposición es una técnica, pero que también hay como, entre comillas, falsas doble exposiciones o situaciones que dan la sensación de doble exposición sin que lo sean, ¿no? Es como una técnica que es mucho más compleja que simplemente hacer dos fotos y creemos que este resultado demuestra que es tan válido una cosa como la otra, ¿no? Súper, súper interesante. Sí, hace parte como de esa sorpresa realmente también con la doble exposición cuando, pues, a veces la piensas, pero a veces si estás copiando mucho más rápido, mucho más espontáneo, pues no sabes realmente qué va a suceder con, con, con lo que salga ya en el revelado, ¿no? Entonces, claro. pues, siempre todas estas técnicas son sorpresivas y también, pues, como muy gratas. Súper. Muchísimas gracias, Claudia. Es un placer conocer tu trabajo. Eh, can we talk with John? John, are you there from the US? Can you explain us this image? It would be amazing if you can talk yeah. about Hi. it and introduce yourself. Sure. Thank you for having me. Uh, so my name is John Sanchez. I'm from California, but I live and work in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, this image right here is part of a series I started back in early 2019 called Vivir en Sueños, which translates to live in dreams. Um, so for this photograph and many others, I've started using the double exposure technique by having my subjects, I usually take portraits of people. So my subjects are all people with flowers. So I put them against, you know, the sky so it can get the background really blown up. If you can see on this one, you can see a little bit of the clouds in the background. Yeah. And then with the second image, you know, I layered over with flowers that are easily available to me. Um, this photo was taken at one of my favorite spots, which is a historic uh, cemetery here in Atlanta. That's very, very big. And then they have different flowers there that bloom, you know, throughout the year. I think this was taken in April. So the cemetery, you know, was full of different roses, different colors. Um, yeah, so it's, it's beautiful. Um, you, you have done both images at the same time, or you have done all the portraits and then put it again and doing the, the flowers. So the camera I use is a Nikon FM2N. It has a little lever that lets me uh, shoot double exposures in the, the same, same frame okay. at the same time. So all my images are, you know, two, it's, I usually do two, two images in one frame. So for the first image, you know, I do a silhouette okay. and I get my models to, you know, pose kind of like some of the statues in the cemetery, you know, okay. that look very like still like this, you know, <laughs> so it's, If you see some of the other shots I have, you know, it's, we, we you can, can tell see, it's... A, we, we can see them because you have them there in your, in your wall. Oh, yeah. When you are talking, we can see a couple of them more. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea came from that, you know, posing people as like the statues. So you would think, you know, once I told you I shot them at the cemetery, you'd think, wait, you know, is it a statue? Or, you know, was it a real life person at the time? So that's how this yes. one worked out. And, and um, it's also this idea of something that is dead, but at the same time is alive, you know, and the flowers that is just a moment, and then they just, the, the flowers are dead. You know, I think it's a good uh, contrast, you know, to do like, like a metaphor visually between this idea of dead and being alive for a so short time. Right. The film I used for this was also one of my second time using this film. It was a Uh, Lomography film, Lomochrome Purple. So when I shot this, you know, I was trying to choose colors that the film would like really make it stand out. So like 
the film said, you know, it would turn blues kind of turquoise, it would turn reds and pinks more vibrant. So it really worked, you know, with a lot of my work, it's all really like dreamy, uh, you know, so, you know, like any double exposures, you, you kind of plan as much as you want, but it's always a surprise and you, you know, it's always like a happy accident. So this and many of the other images even behind me, you know, have all been kind of just, you know, I take one image and then set the second one, you know, I try to align it as best as I can and hope that it turns out how I saw it in my head. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's <laughs> beyond what I thought it was, you know, and I just, that's what I love about, you know, experimental photography. It's, you know, you can't really be upset about it. It's always, you know, yes. that's an amazing game. It's always an amazing experience. You know, no matter what you get, you're like, whoa, that's that's really weird. You know, it's beautiful. Great. Thank you so much for this image. Have you been uh, trying film soup or don't? Because if you have Lomochrome purple, you can do it for yourself, you know? Right. Uh, I haven't tried film soup yet. I have a few friends that have, and okay. my partner and I have been talking about maybe you know experimenting with some or we found people that sell you know film soups already okay uh, like I, I heard in the chat that uh carlos makes film soups and sells them so i think you know the next thing i want to do is you know play with film soup multiple exposures and you know just take it to another level you know experiment again sure well john uh, if you got any lomochrome purple uh you can do the film soup with lemon because it reacts so much and it gives oh. you like the vibrant colors and everything. So you will fall in love with that mix. But you mean Lomochrome and, and lemon film soup? Yeah, do the film soup with Lomochrome purple and lemon. I, I did a I YouTube video so <laughs> you can see the results. The, the colors are amazing. Yeah, I'd love to see that. That, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, and also congratulations for this photo. I mean, it's uh really really um good for you because you know how to use the light the backlight of the subject gives you the not the darkness the enough darkness to play with the flowers and it's a really really nice one thank you thank you very much yeah after a lot of experiments you know now i think i you know started to learn how to do it you know all my images are now pretty consistent you know as far as getting the person and something in the middle amazing thank you so much john for being with us from the us uh, please follow john's work um, he has amazing images like this on his instagram account let's give the word to shana Fakri in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, are you there thank you for being with us shana thank you so Okay, I start. Okay, so I use a digital camera and I always love to do double exposure. Like the majority of my work is based on double exposures because I feel like uh, there is more movement and more philosophy in it. Like it's more mystical, I think. And uh, this picture was taken with my Fujifilm X-T2. It's a 35 millimeters. I was okay. spending my afternoon with my friend and like uh, we were talking and speaking. And as always, I always have uh, my camera and like I try to take uh, like everything that, that inspires me. And I just bought this uh, bouquet of flowers like uh, hours before for myself. I always do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Yes, so uh, I just took a shot of this bouquet and then uh, I took my friend and I feel like um, it's like she's like working with flowers and it forms like a cloud in the sky. So it's like she's using elements of the earth to like form something that's spiritual and elevated. So it's like... Um, a connection between the two worlds, world, yes, yes, between, like the, the earth and the sky. And I think like the human here, like she's a woman, she's like a human, and she represents. Um, I don't know how to say this. Uh, 
<laughs> you can say it in French and we can try to translate it for you. C'est un canal entre bah, le ciel et la terre. Yes, it's a channel between the earth and the... So, like, uh, it represents for me the spiritual path because okay. we can't uh, be elevated spiritually without being grounded. Yeah. So that's what I want to convey with this picture. And yes. Um, Amazing. Amazing. Uh, this has some uh, digital treatment? No. Uh, no. It was taken like my camera has the double exposition uh, okay. setting, so okay. I just uh, do it myself. And okay, and the girl, the, the girl in the second picture was out of focus. That's how it looks yeah. like broomy like, somehow. Yeah, it's like dreamy and ethereal, yeah. and I love uh, like pastel colors. Like it soothes my soul. Like when I take <laughs> those kind of pictures, like it's like I'm creating my own world, you know? Yes. And it's very related to my inner world, my inner visions and yeah. So, uh, and this is a woman and I think uh, in our uh, like world, we don't uh, consider a woman as equal as a man. We all know that. And I think, uh, like the fact that I take uh, many women in pictures with the flowers, it's like a reminder of empowerment. Like uh, with the flowers, it reminds them that that they are divine as the flowers. Because for me, nature is divine. We're all divine, and it's like a reminder. It's a message. Nice, mm. nice. I'm I'm reading all the the comments on the chat and everyone is really happy about this image and they are just doing a lot of comments. Thank you, um, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we are really happy of having the, fir the first African people with us sharing. We really want more people to be part of, of the festival and I, I was really surprised with this image. Thank you so much for being sharing it with us and I hope you can keep uh, working on double exposure because I, 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 I think you have a great, great image and a, and a great project. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shana. Do we have Lalo with us also from Mexico to explain this crazy image? I think we, we are going to have some technical things to learn from this image with Lalo. Uh, hi, Lalo. everyone. Uh, hi. <laughs> Uh, hi uh, everyone, thanks for the space. My name is Eduardo Espinosa, better known as Lalo Michu. I've been taking este, analog photo for about six years. Uh, I like double exposures and my English is very bad. So to explain how uh, I took this photo, I will speak in Spanish. Um, uh, don't worry, I understand. Um, but it's difficult to me speak English. I leave the text in the in the chat. Okay. <laughs> Perdón por eso es que no no hablo bien el, el inglés, no, pero bueno. No pasa nada, tranquilo. Vamos rápido y ya está. Perfecto. Envía sí, sí. el texto y genial. Okay. Gusto saludarte, Lalo. Bienvenido. Ah, igualmente. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Eh, bueno, pues para hacer esta fotografía fue una, una doble exposición en Film Swap. La hice este, con mi novia, con Tania, Tania Revela, y fue parte de este, el, el Film Swap Mon de Lomography. Lo hicimos el año pasado. Esta foto fue hecha con una este, LCA y eh, usamos el splitzer, el splitzer ahí de, de Lomo. Y bueno. Esta técnica la, la quisimos hacer en, en EBS, que es exponer por ambos lados del film la, la fotografía. Y esta fotografía fue planeada. Yo primero hice la, la foto de la, del edificio, que es un edificio aquí emblemático en México. Y eh, le mandé la foto de referencia a Tania. Ya después este, volteé el rollo, se lo envié. Y ella expuso estas torres de, de luz que se ven ahí en Red Scale. Fue hecha con un, este, con un rollo hectar y este, pues lo hicimos eh, el año pasado en abril, cuando el confinamiento estaba como más pesado, 
Entonces no nos veíamos y fue como una manera ahí de, de estar unidos. <ríe> y pues ya es eso, usamos el splitzer, pero eh, son en realidad cuatro disparos porque lo usamos así este, eh, con un cuarto del de, de, de splitzer. Y pues eh, así quedó, no quedó tan, tan perfecta porque se ve ahí una línea del lado derecho, pero pues aún así siento que, que, que nos quedó bien. Y pues nos hizo creador ahí a, a dos cámaras porque sí ganamos en, en, en el Team Swap de Lomography, nos ganamos ahí una Lomomut número uno padre. y una La Sardina. Padre, padre, padre. Déjame que voy a traducir porque técnicamente me interesa que todo el mundo entienda esta foto, ¿ok? Lalo was sí, sí. explaining this image. Uh, they were doing, Lalo and his girlfriend, Tania Revela, they were doing this for the Lomography month, uh, something month the last year. Uh, with the Lomography camera, uh, it was, it, it's interesting, that's why I'm going to try to translate a little bit about the technique because it's interesting because it has so many things that we can learn. The first thing is that he was using a creative uh, objective called Splitzer, that what it does is that you can have half of the image, okay? That Splitzer, Splitzer is a really basic thing that you can use. I personally don't like, but the results are amazing that you can do half and half. They use this one to separate clearly one part from the other, but at the same time, they did a triple exposure. Lalo did twice this Latino Seguros Tower, okay, twice for doing like a double exposure, and then Tania did the other part. But when, the, but she did the other part with the red scale treatment. They changed the, the side of the negative You can put it in the end, take it out and put it from the other side and you convert it automatically to red scale. What makes that is that technically you have these two kind of parts of the, of the film, one with the normal side and one with the other side and it makes a red scale. That's why we choose this image because it's amazing, not just because Lomography said that you are amazing, that they give you some gift because you won this prize, but because they are using a lot of different techniques for the splitzer one, the triple uh, exposure and the red scale thing that is also giving amazing results. If you have some question or something about this, you can ask and there are some also tutorials on, on internet how to do it, this red scale. This is like the home way made of doing it. And you have the other way, like more professional. I think the result, Lalo, is amazing. Uh, Carlos, do you have any question for Lalo or something else you want to explain or in, in Spanish or in English? Um, no, I just have to say I tried this technique and it's quite hard because you have to think how to put your camera in order to to mix the photo. I mean, with it, with a splitzer, it's quite easy, but you need to yes. To, to put the images in in the right position. So that's the most difficult part. Um, nothing to say. Con congratulations for this photo, Lalo. Espectacular. Eh, muchas gracias. <laughs> gracias, Lalo. Gracias, quería, gracias. quería explicarlo eso porque es interesante para que la gente también se, sepa que existen estas otras técnicas por si nunca la habían eh, visto para que la entiendan para explicarla y para aprovecharlas porque creo que con este tema de red scale hay mucho, mucho margen para trabajar con los carretes, más allá del film sub y todos los, los films que vienen modificados o que se pueden comprar modificados o que se pueden modificar en casa. Creo que el tema del red scale también da muy buenos resultados y que, y que es guay para, para aprovecharlo. No sé si tienes algo más para contarnos. Eh, sí, bueno, rápidamente, eh, para red scale se recomienda sobreexponer ahí el rollo. Este es Hectar 100, creo que Tania lo tiró a ISO 25. Y la okay. técnica esta de EBS... ¿Cuatro la... veces? ¿Cuatro veces? ¿Sobrepuesto cuatro puntos? Eh, a ISO 25, sí, sí para, para que saliera. Vale. Eh, y la técnica esta la, la vimos ahí en Lomography, en, eh, con este Jodacrome. Ahí tiene un artículo, entonces ahí pu pudimos este, emplearla bien de esta manera. Genial, si lo puedes pues compartir ya... después en el chat, sería genial. Así también otras personas pueden hacerlo para entenderlo mejor y todo. Sería interesante. Sí, sí, claro. Súper. Y pues nada... No, Tania no nos pudo acompañar en esta ocasión, pero pues aquí estamos y, y, y ya. Super, gracias por gracias, el Lalo. Seguramente estaremos grabando, bueno, estamos grabando esta conferencia y la, la editaremos. Y a partir de la semana claro. que viene seguramente la tendremos en, en internet, así la puedes compartir con ella. <risa> será contenta de vernos y nosotros contenta de verlas, de verla a ella también. Así que eh, gracias, a mí me gustaría Lalo. decirle a Lalo que no elegí esta imagen 
porque ya había otra persona de México y era como... Claro, era muy complicado, pero es que es brutal, sobre todo, no solo por la imagen como ha salido, sino por la técnica que hay detrás y el trabajo. Es, es brutal. Súper, súper, súper. Sí, 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 gracias. Ahí vale. seguiremos este, siguiendo todo el trabajo del Experimental Photo Festival. Gracias, Lalo, y espero que puedan venir en algún, en algún momento también. Eh, sí, sería, sería genial. Tenemos a Ana Clara con nosotros, no la, vi, no la he visto antes, eh, no sé si está, pero me gustaría hola, hablar hola, con ella sí. un momento. Hola, ¿qué tal? Hola, ¿cómo va? Voy a hablar en, en español, pero dejo en el chat en la presentación. Vale, perfecto. Vamos rápido y está genial. Explícanos un poquito de tu vida y de la foto. Bueno, de mi vida, yo soy de Argentina, Buenos Aires, capital. Eh, acá yo estudio artes escénicas, básicamente danza y teatro. Pero desde muy chica que saco fotos. Eh, como que desde los 14 me metí en lo analógico y, y es mi favorito. Y acá vendo rollos de cine vencidos, medio como destinados a la experimentación. Ah, muy bien, guay. Eh, esta foto igual la saqué en México, en México de F, estaba de viaje, y lo que hice fue mezclar fotos de, de, de iglesias, o sea, fotos muy antiguas con lo que es la calle de México, la ciudad de México. Y nada, se crearon fotos, eh, para mí son como cuadros, ¿no? Como esa mezcla entre el cuadro y la fotografía, como entre la pintura y la fotografía. Y es muy loco porque siempre voy encontrando cosas distintas, ¿viste? Claro. Eh, muchos detalles todo el tiempo y... Sí, sí, es que cuando uno pierde el cuadro Cuando uno ya, ya se va del cuadro tradicional Empiezas a ver muchísimos detalles Y puedes ir centrándote en cada parte distinta de la foto Y ves una foto distinta y una cosa diferente Sí, y siempre me interesa mucho Como retratar un poco lo que es la ciudad eh, La gente, lo, lo popular un poco Claro y, y me interesa mucho el contraste que hay entre lo que son esas pinturas de siglos atrás con lo que es el siglo de ahora, ¿no? Claro. Eso. Sí. Es vale, mejor. entonces, ¿qué cámara tenías? ¿Qué carrete? Y... Es un Pro Image 100 y vale. la saqué con una Minolta X300S. Súper, 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 súper. Vale, bueno. Eh, te vamos a dejar sin pregunta porque necesitamos ir para adelante que ya son las... bueno, nos hemos pasado un poquito del tiempo yo creo que la imagen habla por sí sola así que te agradecemos mucho la gente te sigue para, para ver más cosas del proyecto muchísimas gracias por, por estar con nosotros hoy dale, gracias a vos muchas gracias okay. Ana Clara, nos vemos pronto do we have Philip Thompson with us from the US to explain a little bit about this image hope he's with us Hey everyone, thanks for inviting me. It's, it's been great seeing everyone's work. Um, yeah, so I, I'm here in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I was taking pictures during the quarantine. This was one of them, one of my experiments. I like to use uh, old cameras. Um, I had this one that I got from my hometown in Rochester, New York. And uh, what I like about the old cameras is that they have a lot of means for you to do double exposures very easily. So I've been experimenting with that. The other thing is that they don't have, uh, some of these have, uh, don't have a flash sync or it's difficult to uh, find a flash that fits them. So what I did instead is I just use a long exposure where I could use a flash um, multiple times to create uh, a multiple exposure. Okay, okay but um, this just one photo. Well, it's the shutter was open. Okay. Yes. It's, it's a longer. I'm, it's a long. It's, it's a long exposure. Move picture, but it's just one. Okay. There. Perfect. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I really like what Anna just said about um, looking at uh, paintings because I feel like that's something that I'm doing here with these images. Thinking of an image or the piece of film itself as a canvas. Uh, and painting it with light um, in multiple at multiple moments. So combining different moments together um, on that canvas. Yes, I, I think it's an amazing image. I choose it because 
you have this feeling that it's like different images, but at the same time is the same one. And this technique of working with the flash, I, I think is really amazing. Here you have like four images and you can also have this idea of movement and being still at the same time that I think that it has a lot of things to, to work and to experiment with this, you know? Thank you. Okay, Carlos, do you have any question? Did you get this idea on your first side? Or what do you thought? Carlos, are you there? I think he left for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he needs to go to the toilet. <laughs> okay. We are all waiting. Okay, anyway, we don't have Carlos anymore with us, but mm -hmm. anyway, thank you so much, Philippe. I think this image is, is, is great and it can also talk about this technique with the flash that we can also use. Normally we used to do pictures outside for having a lot of light. What we are working in our workshop also is this technique of going outside and work with shadows and the counter light and everything, but we have not tried this, uh, this flash um, probably we have a lot of things to learn about it. We, last year we have some, someone doing constructivist um, Polaroid, a workshop on constructivist Polaroid in our festival, and he was also working with, with double exposure uh, with flash. I, th I think you can share Laura uh, his Instagram account because it was also amazing and it can be inspire in inspiring. Yeah, I will check. Carlos, we have been talking about you and you were not there. Yeah, <laughs> so, sorry, I have to change my camera because I got the AC connected and it's so hot in here. Okay. I'm gonna no problem, no problem. turn it off. I have to change the camera because it got like overheated. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Thank you so much, Philip, for being with us. And we are so happy that you sent this image. We have really enjoyed it. <laughs> and we also learned something you hope people can uh, keep learning and, and sharing with this technique. Okay, we're happy we are 80 people now from all over the world sharing. We are going to go to the second part of the meeting. Uh, in this part, we are going to go to small groups. We have 10 moderators, okay, that are going to moderate the debates. We have a lot of crazy uh, questions. We are going to start debating with them and then the moderators are going to make a small resume, an abstract of what you have been debating. When we come back, we are going to be sharing the ideas of everyone. Thank you so much for the 10 of you that has been presented. Uh, thank you so much for the people from Australia that it was really early in the morning. Bernadette and also people is doing a big effort to be with us. Thank you so much for that. Um, hope you are going to enjoy this second part. We have created these small groups with the idea of sharing more. Feel free to open your mic, uh, to give your opinion, to know each other, to follow uh, also on Instagram and sharing. This is what we want to do with this festival. This is a place of sharing. Enjoy it and have fun. I'm going to create the groups now. Maybe it can take some time because uh, Zoom mix mix you automatically, okay? Sometimes you are going to find that there are two moderators in the same group. I'm going to change you, okay? If you have the, the situation that someone else that are moderators are in your group, just wait, I'm going to take one of you outside and put it in another group, okay? Just be patient the first five minutes. Then you are going to have like um, 20, 25 minutes to debate and you are going to see like a countdown. I'm going to put it in the chat. Like you have five more minutes and then you are going to see a last minute countdown for just to close and finish everything. If you have finished your question, you can just do another question or just explain about your life or whatever you want. Just keep sharing because we have 25 minutes to do that. Okay, uh, probably we are going to have also people, Spanish speakers that may need some translator. If you can, someone can help them in the group, it would be amazing, okay? Thank you so much. See you all in in 25 minutes you just have to accept going to the to the groups okay Bye. I'm, go I'm going to create <laughs> nine groups automatically see you in a couple of minutes see you.
Okay, did you have fun? It was fun. Did you learn? <laughs> yes. <laughs> everyone. Yes. What do you think about the format, Lena? It's your first time. What 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 was your feeling about it? Oh, uh, I. It was not so easy. In the end, we chatted a lot because okay. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we didn't have a proper answer to the questions. But it was really sweet to get in closer contact with like a random bunch of people. It's really nice. Yeah, it's really good. Great. This was yeah. like as we did the last year uh, that that walk. Do you remember the walk, uh, the yes. double exposure walk? That yes, it, you are like walking, and in some point, someone comes and say, "Hey, hello, who are you?" You know, and you are just meeting with random people in the way. Exactly. Very sweet. <laughs> and it was so cold. <laughs> <laughs> that day was crazy. <laughs> oh, it wasn't cold. Cold is now. <laughs> <laughs> For us, it was amazingly cold. Oh uh, yeah, sure uh, I can. It was not. <laughs> Yesterday we had a walk in the snow, like big, a lot of snow. Crazy. Nice. Really <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Lena. If someone else has some feedback for us, it would be amazing if you can send us an email during the week and say what you, what was your feeling, if it was okay, if we can change something. We are always open to this kind of new interpretation of reality. Because we are working with the festival every day, it's hard. And in the end, sometimes we just lose um, perspective, you know. That's why we are really open to all your comments. Carlos, darling, are you ready to start resuming what you have been talking in your group? Yes, I think so. Um, okay, so we have to debate to talk about the um, what was the essential part of the multi-exposure technique that make the, make it different to another one so at the end we we talk about the unexpected results you can get from like playing with multi exposures and shooting without taking care or thinking about the images and just making one on top of another one and you can play as a child and at the end experimenting is to the idea is to have him fun. If you have fun, that's that's okay. And also, Rach, I think he he's in here. Um, show us like um, a pinhole uh, camera that he made with a nine pinhole in a. I think it was in a tablet, in a chocolate uh, tablet bar or something <laughs> like that. And yeah, yes, so the idea was, was yeah, that one. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, it's mental. Crazy. <laughs> and the idea was to cover in the different parts of the film uh, in order to complete the surface, but not to put in the images on top of another one. So it was one image, like a collage. Okay, crazy. Yeah. Amazingly um, good idea. <laughs> we talk Maybe about the, the... I can quickly share, Carlos, my screen. Yeah, yeah of course. So that way everybody will uh, know what exactly we are talking. Yeah, please show the results. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so this is a multiple exposure, but it is not one on one another. So, but it's a kind of little bit of a separate. Uh, basically, whatever I'm showing here is a one, two, three, four, five, seven. So once I take this picture, I thought of uh, adding two more. So that's what uh, my actual camera looks like at this time in my hand. So at the time, uh, basically it has only um, uh, seven uh, pin uh, pinholes, and then I intentionally make it uh, to uh, uh, come on the corners of the uh, film, and then yeah. So this is what it happened. Amazing! Thank you so much. We are going to share yeah. your. Oh, they are already shared. Cool, already shared. It. Thank you so yeah. much. I think it's a great idea for everyone to have more experience and more ideas of how to do like like double exposure, multiple exposure, also in being whole. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing your screen. I think it was really interesting, yeah. Carlos. And also else? another tip is uh, basically we have uh, these kind of a uh, laptop covers, webcam uh, covers available for two bucks, like uh, six pieces. Okay. Yeah, we can use that uh, as a shutter for the pinhole. So it's uh, very you can easy. Open it and close. Yeah, it. just uh, open, close. So that is one tip for uh, entire group to use uh, this kind of a two bucks 
yeah, we can buy like a uh, ten pieces of this. So that's Amazing. genius. <laughs> yeah. So that is one of the good tip uh, I recently find my own uh, my own uh, experimental research. I find this one. So Amazing. Yeah. feel free to uh, connect uh, my Instagram uh, Raj Mudna. So I. Uh, yeah, I'm clearly showing my uh, name here. So great. Yeah, that way I can share more, and then I can learn from you also more. Thank you Thank so you. much. Uh, can you stop sharing your screen because we can yeah. do it for you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Thank you so much, Carlos. Some other idea? Um, yes. Well, thanks to Rah, it was a really different approach <laughs> to the multi-exposure. We great. we were just shocked on the idea. <laughs> and Thank you. Also, we uh, Frank exposed the idea of the um, the multi exposure offers the opportunity of to like to play with a multi dimensional because you are like you're feeling emotions, you're seeing the reality, but sometimes the reality is not matching the emotions you're having. So that's like a multi dimension. Amazing. Um, yeah, it's can a really share deep the approach. Instagram account now, please. It will be amazing if everyone can see that. Okay, let's go to the next group because we are just mainly on time and we don't want, if you want to leave, you can do it. Karen, do we have Karen here? Do you want to explain what happened in your group? What was the debate about? And if you get some ideas that you want to share with everyone? Yeah, sure. Um, so I had a lovely group and we we had very deep conversation that but mainly the question was what is your drive to work experimentally especially with double exposure or film soup and basically what i can summarize is that we um the the main answer was to be able to show some kind of another world from what is in our surroundings to be able to just uh, explore and what is possible to do with, for example, um, double exposure, to be able to have two universes somehow, to have to be able to play with the present and the past or two different locations. Um, so just to the f the mood of being able to to explore and show different a different word that's that's basically what we talked about and to be able to to make everything different from what already exists and then we started to talk about long exposure and solarography and, <laughs> and different things but that's mainly <laughs> that was very interesting and also that it's like when you're starting a technique then it's infinite because you want to do another <laughs> technique and then sure. it, it goes on and on and on and it never stops so that was very interesting and it was lovely to see everyone like asking for tips some people that were like okay i would like to do um uh, film soups what are the tips and so on so that's basically how we went great that's what that's why i personally love with the festival and with our instagram account is that you can learn like a different technique every day you know every month we are having these meetings and everything and you can keep learning all the time new things and that's at least for me personally is amazing because you can try, try new things all the time also during the festival we have 20 different techniques and we have 80 workshops you are going to be one of them and that means that in five days you can learn three four five different techniques you know and i i, I think this is much different from the normal uh, uh, festivals that you're having in the world for example we have this auto festival in poland with pinhole but they're just doing pinhole you know in our festival you can learn almost everything in a week and you can make amazing friends this is, this is the most interesting for us. Something else happened in your group, Karen? Some idea or something else that you want to share with everyone? Well, we we kind of, it was interesting because we, like I said, we derivate from uh, ex, well, double exposure and film soup to solarography and that <laughs> for um, doing sol solarography, it's, it's also very uh, interesting technique, and, and um, I we talked about also the fact that 
um, after doing something for so long, we all would like to just uh, to explore. And I think that I also so I it was very inspiring for me uh, also personally to to see um, that we are all doing experimental photography, but this is so vast that you can just um, want to explore and and get you are getting inspired so uh well that's that's pretty much it we we just talk about that and Amazing. ask for some tips and so on great if someone else wants to learn more about solarigraphy i have a couple of cameras here with me <laughs> yeah, we have two things <laughs> the first thing is, is that we have the meeting you can find in the online exhibitions you can find the pinhole and solarigraphy one there we have the video of the meeting you are going to find amazing tips there. And we also have a video, a two hour conference, an hour and a half conference that had time, had place the last year festival. You are going to find it also in our YouTube channel. You can follow us because there you have all the creators of Solarigraph explaining how it was at the beginning and showing a lot of amazing, crazy tips about how it works. Keep go working with solarigraphy because at least for me, it's an amazing technique. Thank you so much, Karen, and hope to meet you soon here in Barcelona in July. Yeah, just if I can just take two, two, two seconds just to say thank you uh, for to everybody who is, who is here and thank you for everything that you're doing. And I think that it's an amazing opportunity that uh, well, you and Laura is giving us to be able to connect with each other mostly right now. And I think that you're doing an amazing job and I'm looking forward to meet everybody <laughs> for the festival and, and really was an absolute pleasure. Really. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are so happy that you are saying that because we need having the support every day. We are not doing money of this and we need your support and knowing that everyone is together with us in our in this dream. For us, it's really, really important. The next one is Pablo, Lynn. Pablo, can I can I say something that that the, it, you, in in July there will be a workshop on solar graphy and analemma. Yes. So yes, 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 yes. Two workshops. Come and meet Maciej and also Kasia that are going to be talking about that. We have Polish people doing that. That they are specialists. Thank you so much, Maciej, for this comment. Next one is Lynn. I think Lynn left. She put something in the chat. It yes. Was, it was someone of her group with us that can explain what you have been debating on. Someone, please. I, I don't know who was with her. Maybe, maybe it's too late. But I don't want to lose the opportunity to know what. I was what... with her. I you was are... with her. Thelma. Yeah, Hi, Thelma. <laughs> nice to see you again. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you oh. it's a pleasure to be here yes we had a great time last year with Thelma here in Barcelona and she's going to come yes. again yes hopefully <laughs> I hope I hope go, go. amazing amazing so with with her she we talk about she present us she present us her work okay and she does a very interesting um process um she photographs with a large format camera and later she developed the film she photographs landscapes and what she does is um she she put in put back in the nature like in the water in the place where she took the pictures the negatives and okay. leave it in there for like seven to eleven days to deteriorate and later she okay. printed huge prints but very nice she has printed everything and later we talk about our feelings uh how we feel about the experiment the double exposure and so we talk about that we was another another alondra was there with us if she wants to come in something i can translate it for her and it was another girl from from um argentina i think and uh, so we talk about that it was very very nice thank you for the exchange of our, our ideas and how we feel with this <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Thelma, for being here again with us and hope to meet you soon again. Yes. Um, we have Patrice. Patrice, can you tell us what you have been debating in your group? Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, first of all, it was a very lovely group. And the funny thing is I had a question more related to film soups and basically okay. no one in my group did really <laughs> film soups. But, okay. uh, Zoom is doing but this it crazy was okay, thing. 
Yeah, yeah, but it was fine. We we still had a nice discussion. So just uh, shortly, I I made a suggestion that you could see film soups as kind of a creative representation of the duality of creation and destruction. Okay. So because every destruction leads to the opportunity to create something new. And my question was then, do you see film soups as such a purposeful destruction or do you see it more as a modification of the material? So they all like confess that they don't do film soups, but <laughs> we had still interesting, interesting things. So um, yeah, of course, somehow a film soup is a, is a destruction, but at the same time also modification. And we talked about, yeah, that's part of the accidents and sometimes especially Justin said like the more destructive you are the better because you get absolutely unplanned results and if to be honest I agree with that at least in this part because you need to be brave enough to say hey let's just break it all down and just try something crazy I took actually beautiful pictures but I decided to put this film in a horrible soup and destroy everything what is on there but it will be damn amazing afterwards so um Amazing. Yeah, we, we, we agreed with that and then we had certain things because we tried to figure out also to build a bridge to the multiple or double exposures where you can have a certain approach. I mean, if you took a picture and maybe it's a perfect picture and you make the decision to double expose it or multiple expose it, you again destroy something what you already created, but in order to create something new. It's like a Ah, I thought someone said something. So yeah, that was that. And then we had to think to figure out who maybe did somehow in any certain way already film soups without consciously doing it. Um, <laughs> we had that, uh, I unfortunately just right now forgot the name. One of the guys said he, he bought old film stock like from the garage sale and he oh, had yes. to think that some of the films were completely covered in mold. Okay. So the front side and the back side <laughs> mold and everything was in mold, but he loved the results. So it was also like another sort of film soup, not, yes, not yes, really. Yes, yes. And but, but, yeah. but it's true because the, the film is modified, you know, by the time. <laughs> yeah, by, by time. And yeah, then we had to think what is also like, like special about it in a certain way, which someone started drifting off, of course, discussing a lot. Also like why to do such purposeful destruction or modification is because like photography became quite documentary was like depicting and also then everything became easy to reproduce with the thing so one image we reproduce it and the experimental approach like double exposures multiple film soups give the uniqueness to it because you cannot reproduce even this film soup even if you use the same recipe you put it the same time and the result will be different so maybe some things yes but it keeps it unique And in that way, we all said that in a way, the experimental photography deliberates the traditional photography. And now we had some things about film soup still. I, I liked uh, Justin's comment again. Also, he said it's more like actually like a film sweat sometimes <laughs> if you consider what you do, because in a certain way, yes, whatever modification with the film soups, especially, it's kind of you liquefy the emulsion, so it's sweating. So and then, then we talked about crazy ideas, what we can do, how we could keep uh, liquids in the camera, photograph and manipulate the emulsion at the same time. So yeah, we had had lots of fun. But <laughs> that was, we also had like two Spanish speakers, but none really who could help with translation. That was the only sad part. But as I got, they still enjoyed to, to listen to the conversation. Okay, hope you can at least uh, con contact them with their images, you know, if you can follow them on Instagram, you can at least know their work better. Sometimes this situation with the languages is complicated, but we are making a big efforts to contact with everyone. Thank you so much, Patrice. You are making a big efforts also for translating from German to Spanish. Uh, we are so happy of having you. Um, Patrice is going to be in the festival in July, also doing some amazing workshops about this technique and uh, which you are really going to enjoy meeting him in July. Thank you so much, Patrice. Thank I you. think we have for doing film soup and also film swap and also double exposure or multiple exposure. We, we have to leave the image and the reality, you know, and start going to new world being uh, available for creating new situations. And I think th this is a great debate because you have to be brave to leave your images, you know. Uh, and this is this is good. I think I think it's the first step for experimenting, as we said in the manifest of the first festival. 
uh, experimenting is an attitude, you know, and with this attitude of looking for new things, you have to leave uh, cert certain things in the past. And it's good to have this feeling of being able to go to the future. I, what I want to do for the next festival is making a t-shirt that says, I have met the future of photography, you know, during the festival. I, I'm going to propose this to the group, you know, because I really think that in some point, the experimental photo let's festival... Let's vote, let's vote. <laughs> <laughs> the experimental photo festival is trying to think in the future, you know, and what, how can we see the, the images in the future? And for sure, we have to leave behind this uh, traditional photography, this editorial fashion photography, and also all this documentary photography in the past for being able to see the future. Thank you so much, Patrice. Uh, do we have Lena with us to explain us a little bit what was the debate? Yes, I'm here. Group? Hi, Lena. Hey, I'm here. You can, can you hear explain me? Us? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. I can't Wonderful. see you. Wonderful. You cannot. I'm here. Anyway, so <laughs> I will. I do. I do see her. Yes, I can see you now. Okay. Thank you. You are. You are there. So wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm here. <laughs> so uh, our wonderful group was uh, having the same, or I think the same question, like how to get rid of the liquids of the film soup after you soup the film. Okay. Uh, uh, um, regarding to environmental impact and also how to manage to develop a souped film. Yes, yes. And sorry, sorry, Elena, one, one moment. We're really interested with this because uh, this kind of photography in general, analog photography, is not really ecologically, you know, it's, it's amazingly crazy destroying our world. And we are having some issues, some ethical issues with this situation. That's why I give you this question, because I think it's really important that we start thinking what we are doing with all these liquids, you know? Absolutely. And if we can organize a conference during the festival to talk about this, for everyone giving some ideas, it would be amazing. Mm. So, and uh, in our group, it was uh, similar. So not many people were, um, I think nobody was really souping films. <laughs> besides me and um, there was one more person manipulating black and white films okay. and so we kept the questions uh, general I mean we kept following the topics but it was a bit weird and not so easy to um, answer the questions we thought okay better we develop at home um, because we have heard that labs uh, are going mad if you give them uh, soup films. <laughs> so uh, developing at home in the end gives the same problem. So we were talking about this um, in general and a bit more specific because when you give the soup films to the labs, you better tell the labs that you uh, like manipulated the film. Yes. So they might be able to wait for the, for the end of the day and uh, develop the film then not to ruin anybody else's film. So that was what uh, we were talking about. And still um, we have the liquid of the soup okay. where, that, that we did at home, right? Like the film soup we do at home. When we use the green tea uh, and lemon or vinegar, it's no problem, but yeah. still the film, the material of the film of the negative will leave some uh, unedible <laughs> treasures in the soup. <laughs> And so what to do with it? We can't put it on the compost, uh, <laughs> I guess. So, well, we didn't find a good, uh, a good solution for that. I was, uh, we were thinking about maybe soaking it in a lot of like toilet paper, drying it and burning it. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, we were also talking about, um, uh, uh, ah, there was the question if there is any possible recycling for photo developing uh, chemicals like to use them for anything else to just recycle them or use them for anything else okay. we didn't have a, an answer for this question <laughs> but that's there was a, the, that's the yeah. thing that we have a, now we started with this question what we are going to do you know with all these chemicals and we don't have a, an answer but it's nice that everyone at least now we have 43 people listening that this is a problem you know we can we can start keeping finding the solution. For example, we have people all around the world 
selling uh, these film soup, but we don't have anyone in the world recycling them. This yes, is the future, yes, you know? I mean, it's normal that we don't have a solution, but now we know that we have a problem, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah, that's very good. And uh, like in this, in this uh, mood, our group was, I would say. So, okay, we have thousands of questions uh, and we have maybe some crazy ideas or maybe we don't even have an idea. And I'm very happy to share it with the big group now. So there is a problem, as you said, let's find something to solve it. It's really nice. <laughs> yeah, so our group- um, our Pablo, group Lena, sorry. I have something to say related to- Sure. Like, um, Recycling. Yeah, recycling. If you get like the train line rocks, the stones, the what? Mm -hmm. you can uh, las piedras de una estación de tren. If you take the stones, you can okay. put like in a um, in a pot, and you put the liquid, the chemicals inside, and just the sun evaporate the water, and you keep like the dust, the chemical dust. Okay. So that's uh, an idea. Not, Someone not to told me, and I didn't try to be to be honest. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. I need to try it. Not right now because it's super rainy. But I will in the summertime. That's okay, a very all, good idea. All the chemicals and then stones there, and just let it the, the yeah, sand to make it th work. Those stones has something that helps the um, like separate the water and the chemical itself, and okay. the chemical becomes like just in a dust, and the water just evaporates. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, Carlos. If you can find more tips on this, we can do a conference and try at least to put this debate on. I think at least yes. for me, it's the first time that I have been uh, running with this idea that we have a problem. Hope everyone is going to think more ecologically in the future and we are going to try to change how we are working with this. Thank you so much, Lena, for this debate, Laura. Can you tell us something about your group? It was an amazing group. I was there twice. I don't know why, just saying hello. <laughs> <laughs> because my cat was here too. <laughs> now he left. <laughs> well, uh, it was weird at the beginning because we, I couldn't get in and I, I arrived li really late. And then suddenly Marina jumped in from another group and already answered to some other questions. So <laughs> it was really experimental <laughs> style. So yeah, we talk, it was a sweet group actually. We were um, four ladies, uh, me, Marina, ja uh, Jana, Silvia and Barbara. And Barbara actually just put a tip on the chat about developing soup film, if you want to read that. Okay. And our question was about the consistency. Uh, it was how can artists add more control to the process to make consist, consist, constancy work, sorry. Constancy is the right Like thing. to do all the pictures as how they work yeah. to do it, to repeat it and to do it again in the same way and not to change it all the time. Exactly. So there was, well, the first answer was write down everything. And just to remember, which was the most important part. And uh, for other was more like experimenting a lot. Like for me and for Silvia, we like experimenting a lot. So um, it's difficult for us to choose something and to stick to something because we still are, I don't know, we are still trying everything. And, and she also showed a pinhole camera that she, she did. I don't know if you're there, Silvia. I can ask, she's showing it. I'm here. Yeah, it's pretty much the same concept as uh, Rajas did. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, it's the same. Yes, and but you cat. have a cat. <laughs> but you have she a cat. Has a cat too. I have two, yeah. And a dog. <laughs> Ow! And he bites. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah, and then uh, well, write down everything. Uh, difficult to keep cons constancy. You experiment a lot, and. Uh, and uh, Jana was uh, talking, uh, she's from Chile, she tried, she preferred to speak Spanish and she was talking us about uh, the um, uh, chance that she liked a uh, lot to leave the destiny to her work to the chance. So it's perfect for us, Pablo, because it's the same, <laughs> our same philosophy. And then we just talked about travel. So. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> 
Ah, okay. and I really would like uh, Marina to share uh, her channel, YouTube channel in the group. If you can share the link, just share the link in the chat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Laura. Uh, I, I was there and it was an amazing debate. Ah, sorry. Yes. Also, yes. I wanted, sorry. I, <laughs> because then I know there's no time. We are already too late. Uh, I wanted to thank you, Carlos, for uh, doing the curation of this exhibition, which was a lot of work. Thanks so much. And thanks everyone that joined and all the artists that came to help us uh, as moderator. Uh, Vera, Andre, Karen, Lena, Mateus and Patrice. I hope I don't forget anything, anyone. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> If you don't have time to stay, you can leave. And if you want to stay, we are going to run out with the next uh, participant. We have Vera, Matthews, Andri that also have the groups. Let's hmm. talk with them fast. And I think it. Vera had to leave. I'm not sure she will. There leave. was someone else in Vera's groups? No. Someone uh, else in Vera's? Some, uh, some other moderator, you mean? No, someone in the group that can explain what was the debate in Vera's Aldivar groups. Group. Any volunteer? No, maybe mm. they just left or there were not so many participants. Okay. Okay, anyway, next one is Matthews. Can you explain us what you have been debating? We love your, your background. Your background. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, yeah. Uh, quite fitting the theme, isn't it? Uh, hello yes. to you all, nice to see you. Um, well, yes, I had a pretty nice, but a little bit also shy group. Uh, but we we got through it and we talked about a couple of questions and the first one was about the drive uh, behind uh, the work of the method of working experimentally uh, with double exposures or film soup and um, there was like uh, the theme that many pictures which you can see like for example in, in Instagram they're quite inflationary, like repetitive. You can see like many photographers, but just the style differs and like, you know, trends are the same. They shoot like uh, pretty similar things, like let's say uh, for, um, for example, with street photography, there's like the trend with a lot of shadows and people walking through shadows and stuff like this. It's just an example. And um, the thing is with experimental work, it's endless. You could do so many things and like each work is really unique. And um, especially when you work with uh, film soups, um, you can have like a consistent role, but even within this role, uh, the results can vary, uh, um, vary a lot. And um, there are different um, consistencies uh, within this um, kind of work. And um, you can go deeper and deeper and um, find new techniques or even, uh, let's say, soups or even the way you handle uh, the stuff like for example how do you try it or not this can even affect the results and um, I think that most people use this um, as a result just to express in, in a new way creatively also like another thing was um, with the mistakes or we call it here happy mistakes we all know it like when uh, you shoot a role you didn't think about anything and then boom, there's like this one keeper you love this picture and it's the happy mistake but i think there are different methods you could uh, see like working experimentally sometimes um, you can go out and shoot randomly and see after a couple of weeks after you developed your uh, role and find out, yes, there is something really special about one picture, but sometimes you can uh, work like um, conceptually and see um, you have like a, a special theme or topic um, and you would like to try uh, to work with this topic and with this certain uh, method or technique and see 
if you can uh, find another or new context, whether it is like socially or maybe uh, other things. Um, so you can find new contexts in between with this. So it doesn't have to be necessarily a mistake, uh, but sometimes you can have the idea and use like this certain uh, technique to enhance this idea or just to find relations in between. And also we had the topic with the disposal of the liquids. And um, I think it's also a very important thing uh, concerning uh, sustainability and actually everything else gets more conscious uh, these days about like taking care about nature and environment. And uh, there are no, as Pablo said, uh, special solutions for this because what we do is a niche at the moment, uh, maybe. But um, what I do is sometimes reusing the liquids and trying to see, it depends of course on the liquid you use for the film soup, if it works or not works, but I uh, sometimes I try to reuse it and see if it will uh, diminish or if the effects will be less pronounced or not. Yes. And um, sometimes there's no possibility uh, to dispose it properly, but as I know, as, uh, for Austria at least, you can go to the uh, garbage waste uh, dump, the people who take care about uh, the waste. And uh, if you can tell them what's inside the mix, they will know how to handle this and they will take it. Okay. Uh, this is probably not possible in every country, I think. Depends. Uh, maybe you could do some research, but um, before you just dump it in the toilet or somewhere else, um, it's better to go to a specialist and they say, yes, we can take handle, uh, can handle this, we take, can take uh, care of it. Um, but as I remember, there is some special stuff, like you should mix some uh, special uh, liquids with each other because it will be more uh, complicated for them to separate it again in the end. Okay. Um, but just try and make some research call like the from the city, like the people who take care about the waste and they will tell you or what you can do about it. And um, this is also state driven. So most cases you don't pay it. Um, yeah, if it's not commercially used. Great. Well, um, thank you so much. Sorry for interrupting, but I wanted to add in our group, we were also talking about these special dumps. Mm -hmm. I think there is many countries this in Europe, uh, but not in uh, the rest of the world. No, not <laughs> everywhere, probably, but quite likely, yes. Probably, most likely in Europe. And um, yeah, I mean, that won't happen too much if like one person will not dispose of uh, liquids uh, correctly. But of course, if you work for a long time, you should think about this uh, stuff as well and find or come up with a solution. And I okay. think that's it actually from my side or our side. It, it can be good if, if someone can can study a little bit more about this and doing like a 10, 10 step, you know, if you do this, you have to do this, like easy things mm -hmm. that you can do in, 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 in the world in general, you know, to neutralize the chemicals. I, th I think we really need a conference about this. And also we can put this conference on internet and it can be a good way to teach everyone in the world that we can do things differently. We are really open. If you have some ideas or where we can find some solutions, just send us an email and we are going to organize something during the festival because I think it can be a good thing for everyone to know. Uh, you have been talking at the beginning about this idea of having a project or having an idea and then mm -hmm. the technique. You know, sometimes you ju you're just doing pictures and the yeah. pictures are before and the technique is after it, mm. you know. Uh, in some point of the festival, we are also thinking about this because at the first festival, we have been doing this manifest about uh, the attitude of experimenting. What I want to do for the second festival that is now in July is to start thinking a little bit more about the conceptual part of our work, you know, what we want to say and then try pick a technique you know if we have already know a lot of techniques how can we choose the best technique for what we want to say and what we are going to do for the next festival that this is something that you don't know yet is that we are going to do some um, debate on projects uh, what is the name dossier dossier what's the name laura um, uh, 
It's a portfolio review. Yes, that's the idea. Thank you so much for helping. <laughs> we are going to do uh, eight, seven, six portfolio reviews with Stig Larsen from Norway and with Mark Lenot, that is one of the specialists in the history of experimental photography. And they are going to think with eight participants in each of them on each of these activities to try to see the concept, you know, not just to work randomly in some point, but to start thinking the concept that we want to show and to keep working harder with this concept to find a way to express it. Okay, it's good that you put this thing because we are going to try to work with this also in the festival. Thank you so much, Matthew. Hope you have fun. It, it's weird. Some Sometimes Zoom is doing crazy things, putting people together and everything, but hope you have some fun and you learn some things. Do we have Andre? Do we have Andre, the last one? He is now in Israel. Hope, you, hope he's all, he's with us. Now, I can't see you, but hope you are there. Andre, you are here? No, not anymore. Okay, someone was with Andre, Andre's group, Bernadette. Yes, you were with him, you were just two of you. <laughs> yes, it, was, it ended up just the two of us. It was, it was a little bit strange. We had, we had about six and then all of a sudden it was down to three and then we were down to two. <laughs> that's life, you know. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Well, we actually had a very nice chat. We talked, um, our questions were about double exposure and, and how it differs from painting. So um, we sort of chatted a little bit about that, which is a bit strange. Um, we ended up really talking about pinhole camera in the end and our work and showing each other our studio. So it was okay. very nice. I got to meet someone else. So it was very <laughs> lovely. Um, but yeah, we sort of, we talked a little bit about, um, for me, especially with painting, I find you have a little bit more control with painting than what you do with multiple exposure. So that was sort of more of where we sort of went with that. Um, yeah, it, it's the happy accident, which seems to be the general theme with everybody else that yes, you can still have that with painting as well. Um, but you seem to get more of that with um, multiple exposure. And I think for me, I get more satisfaction from multiple exposure with the happy accident. So um, yeah, it's it's the way we see it, I guess, and what we perceive it to be. So yeah, that was pretty much what we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have fun? Um, yeah, it was great. It was really, really lovely, actually. <laughs> okay, that's the most important part of everything, you know? Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Bernadette, for being at your place so early in the night or so, or, so, <laughs> or this morning. I don't know what time it's now in Australia, but thank you so much for being with us. And thank you, everyone, for being where you are. Hope you are not having uh, problems with this coronavirus crisis or you are too cold in winter or so hot in summer as we know that in Latin America you are having problems with this hot and in Europe we have problems with this cold now thank you so much for being there we are so happy this has been long more than two hours and a half sorry about this but we have fun you know in the end this is this is the most important thank you so much if you want to share this with someone uh, we are going to put the video on probably in a week. We have our specialist in video, Nona, that is going to do these technical things to put it on YouTube and you are going to be able to share it. Thank you so much for being there. Remember that we, Carlos, have a book. I have a book and we are having a workshop ne next week. You can find it in our webpage. And what, uh, what I want to ask you just for saying goodbye, if you have fun, just share someone else Instagram in your account in the stories. If you can just put there, I love this photo. You know, I love your work, and you can just you can you can just share it. It would be amazing. We need to fulfill Instagram with uh, experimental photography. It, it doesn't matter if you don't hashtag the the festival. It, it's it's not about this. It's just to put more experimental photography online. Okay, we are happy and fun if you do that for us. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Carlos for curating the exhibition and Laura for being with the technical part of this. Thank you. Hope to, hope to meet you everyone in, in July. If you can come, perfectly. If not, we are going to have probably an online ticket for you at least to see the conferences. Thank you so much. We had fun, okay? Thank you. Have a great evening or day or night. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
Bye-bye.